Well, if you were down at the Sydney Mardi Gras last weekend, I wasn't, <laughs> not was Madonna. But, it would uh, be fun though, one year. That was Cher, when she was there with her orange hair. The Ship Ship Song, one of the great sounds here at Bay FM, live and local across the bay. And of course, it's that time on a Friday morning, Bay Health with Madu- 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 Madonna. <laughs> the Duna guy, Madonna guy. And our special guest, uh, Mona Sunda the audiometrist, and um, I want to know, um, let's say you found lacking in hearing, Mona, what's the next step? You want to remedy it, you want to improve your hearing, what is the next step? Well, the next step would, um, you know, rule out any contraindication to wear a hearing aid, uh, if needed, but then you would uh, contact, of course, a professional, and you would get a rundown of um, different options, there is many options. There is options for looks and there is options for level of technology. Well, Ma- Madonna and I would go for the looks bit first. We would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> depends on with looks. Like people think, oh, if I just have a small one in the ear, that would be the best one. Not necessarily. Uh, there is a lot of hearing aids, just small hearing aids sitting behind your ear with just a little receiver in your ear. They're probably the least um, visible. If you have in your ear, if your canal can have one deep in the canal, yes, it may be invisible. But in the canal, people might see it then in the canal. If you have a bit of hair, <laughs> in particular, of course, people wouldn't see it at all. Yes. Um, there is other drawbacks with having them in your ear. You've got a bit often of what we call the occlusion effect. Like if you stick your fingers in your ears and talk, you get that resonance in your head, yeah. and, and that's a bit uncomfortable. Um, also, we block the ear off. We may also block off some of your natural hearing that might be within really normal. So, if you block it off, we have to compensate for that. Yeah. So, we often do also what we call an open fit, meaning we let through your natural hearing, and then we just add to that in the range that you uh, you. You have a loss. With the, the progress of medical science, do you think in the future there could be a surgical procedure that could uh, remedy hearing loss? Mm. When the hearing loss is caused by a middle ear problem today, you, you can have operations. You had for years, even so many years ago when I started, you know, they, they, I worked in the department which also did the operations. And that's good if it's sort of a mechanical problem in your middle ear. Um, as it is today, uh, I've seen some research about regrowing uh, hair cells and things like that, but I don't think it's in the near future. Yeah, because I was thinking about stem cells, you know, so I suppose like just last week oh. I saw an article about uh, there's a new dental procedure that isn't available widespread yet but where they're inserting stem cells into the tooth during a root canal to help to regrow. You've got to have one done, tell me. Tell I know, me. I, I sort of went, done, I've been waiting for something like this. But yeah, so I imagine once we get that sort of technology, we might be able to do something to repair those nerve cells that are dying off well, in the I, brain. I was, I was thinking about vision, how they now can replace, is it the cornea? And the retinas? It was, it was the Russians, I think, um, initiated all this with laser surgery and retinas and corneas. Yeah. Um, replacing them and no need to wear glasses. So hopefully um, hearing will be um, very close to the launching pad with those procedures. But I imagine technology's improved massively in 30 years anyway. Oh, unbelievably. Uh, I do believe before they can um, regrow hair cells and all that, it's still a bit ahead, but um, hearing aid technology is is, is totally amazing. Um, I've gone from using my screwdriver to adjust the hearing aid to using the computer and um, and now some of the technology is, is totally amazing. Mm. You really wonder what Mona, what they'll have in 10 years time with everything but uh, in, in this subject of uh, hearing, 10 years time um, they would have made huge progress I dare yeah. say. Absolutely and that's, that's what I've seen. I remember early 90s when the first digital hearing aids came out. Yes. And I said to people, oh, 
gee, I don't think it's ever going to get better than yeah. this. I stopped saying that long ago because um, it's just it's just getting better and better. Yeah. And that's why medical insurance is so expensive. All the research that's going into it, uh, all the advancements, it's costly, and um, that's where all the expense goes. I suppose is there health fund support, you know, for hearing yeah, aids, well, hearing testing, that sort of thing? Yeah. So most health funds uh, have a, a rebate system. It's there is a lot how much they give back. So yes. We always tell people, check with your health fund. Yeah. But yeah, so most of them... Give have, something. Give yeah. something back for hearing yeah. aids. In most places, most hearing centres, I believe, we do anyway, if people buy a hearing aid, they're really not buying the hearing aid, they're buying the services. Right. So if people pay for a hearing aid, we will look after them for the life of the hearing aid and there is no limit to... to how many times they come in for adjustments or anything like that. And I believe most places work like that. Yeah, I, because, you know, I've been doing brain integration with clients with a, with kinesiology for 17 years, and it's sort of interesting. I've never, it's never occurred to me to send someone, which sound, well, from your perspective, this will probably shock you, but it's never occurred to me to send someone for a hearing exam. So I regularly look after people with comprehension issues and and that sort of thing, and we sort of do all sorts of naturopathic things. But, yeah, it's going to really change the way that I think in relation to when people come in yeah, and so, see us these days. So really with things like that, uh, you would want to rule it out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, course, it's not the hearing, so we need to address uh, this differently. Yes. But if there is a hearing loss, um, then you're not really starting on the level that you want to yeah, do yeah. to do your job. Exactly. No, that's... It's a very, very important issue which uh, is not spoken about really around the family table. No. It's a hearing loss. Mona, thanks very much for coming in. It's, it's been really enlightening. And um, if you'd like to contact Mona, you, you certainly can. The, the number is 3820-9614. She's one of the Redland Bay lenders uh, down here. The, the number again, 3820-9614, Redland Bay. And um, Mona would be more than happy to have a chat to you and um, try and find a remedy if you've got a hearing loss. Mona, thanks very much. That's my pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. Having me. And I think we'll have you back again. All the very best. Thank you.